Hi and welcome back to Computer Science for Everyone. In this video we're going to try to program some array lists as we have just seen in the presentation. So I've already created the array list intro class where I'm going to be introducing these concepts and I've created the Java documentation class description um, and we have our main method in which we're going to do most of the testing. So the first thing we have to do is actually create the array list. So in this case, we're going to do a list, and then what we're going to store, for example, strings, phrases, and then this is going to equal a new array list string, like so. So we have to import list and array list. This isn't working, so I'll just import it manually. Like so. And I forgot the new. Okay, so that's usually a problem. Don't forget the new or else the Eclipse won't know what you're meaning. Okay, so list of string, and this is uh, going to be called phrases, and this is a new array list of strings. Just close that old console off. The thing we can do with these phrases is that we can add new elements to the array list because array lists, unlike arrays, don't have a predefined size. So as we can see, we can add, and then the add method is already accepting strings because our list is storing strings. You will see when we create an, int an integer list, this add method will take integers instead of strings. Okay, so we have this phrases list. Notice how the brackets go after the crocodile clips and not before them. And I've already explained in the presentation why we use integer and not int. Uh, and this is because int is a primitive and you cannot use primitives in lists or array lists. So in here, as you can see the add method, which is the first one we've got here in this list, now is taking integers, whereas before it was taking strings. This is because Java already perceives we're storing integers in this list and therefore it changes the methods to use integers instead of strings. And we can add an int. Or we can add a new integer object. This is a very interesting concept of Java. Java will convert this int into this by default, because it knows this is really what you mean. You're storing integers and not ints. So if you just put five, it assumes you mean a new integer with the value five. So you can do it either way. To be honest, I am not really sure if there is any difference. Um, so just so you know uh, that you can create new integer objects like so, or you can just put five and 10. I don't think there is any difference, and definitely not at this level. I've never encountered any problem with using either of them. Okay, so we have our numbers. Let's add a last one. And there we have our three numbers. And now, if once again we print the actual list, we'll get something really weird, which is the three items and the square brackets around them. Um, some people could be expecting the three of them separated by new lines or something. This is actually not as bad as the array. But what we ideally would want is to get each one of them individually. So we get this and do one and two. So whereas in the array we got the object identifier um, for the array and the type. Here we get a list, which is what phrases is. It's a list. And when we print the list out, we get a list of items. If we wanted to get the three items separately, we would do something like this. 
we would get the list and then get one of the items from the list. Index 0, 1 and 2 would be 0, 1 and 2. So there we can print three items. What other things can we do? If we have two lists, we can add one list to another with the add all method. So let's sh show you what I mean with this. I'm going to create another list of strings right here. I'm going to call it phrases2. And then down here, I'm going to do phrases add all phrases2. Like so. And then I'm going to actually print the list. You will see there are duplicates now. Hello, bye bye, something else. And then we've added all of the items of this other list into phrases. And so we get hello, bye bye, and something else again. Obviously, we cannot add numbers to phrases or the other way around because numbers are not strings and strings are not integers. Other things we can do. This clear method looks interesting. Removes all of the elements from this list. It's funny how it says optional operation. So this would indeed clear the list out. We can check if the list is empty. And this returns true if the list contains no elements. So this should return false. Because the list indeed has some items in it. And apart from that, there is not a lot more that you want to do yet. You can remove elements and retain elements, and we will look at what these are uh, when we study sets later on in this section. So you don't worry about them for now. Finally, you can also convert this list into an array. Um, however, we won't be going over how to do that just yet because it is a bit more complicated and would require some extra explanations. One last thing that you will use in the next uh, couple lectures is the iterator. What an iterator is, it's an object used to go through the elements of a list. So let's move on to the very next presentation. We're going to iterate through arrays and then in the following one, we'll use the iterator to iterate through the array list items. So let's move on to the next one and I'll see you there.